Hello, you're listening to a radio program recorded with Dr. Wayno. Dr. Wayno is the Executive Director of the Morgan Welch Inflammatory Breast Cancer Clinic in Houston, Texas, and I am Terry Arnold, and I am an IBC survivor and the founder of the IBC Network. And I have Dr. Wayno with me today to discuss the basic, basically I'm calling it the 101s of inflammatory breast cancer. Hello, Dr. Wayno. Hi. I'm glad you're with us today. Thank you very much for the invitation. Well, what I'd like to do for the next, you know, is maybe 20, 30 minutes, talk about inflammatory breast cancer. It's very near and dear to my heart because I had it, and I'm a four-year survivor due to grace of God and the good care of MD Anderson, which I'm very grateful. And um, I would like to do an overview, like I said, a, basically a 101 on what is inflammatory breast cancer because this is not what we think of when we hear the word breast cancer. General breast cancer and it's unique because it presents with the redness of the entire breast, and sometimes you don't have a mass. And commonly, when you talk about breast cancer, people feel a lump. general breast cancer, and it's unique because it presents with the redness of the entire breast, and sometimes you don't have a mass. And commonly, when you talk about breast cancer, people feel a lump, actually. And in this case, you may not feel a lump, and it's just that you could look like the breast is infected, and, and, but it's actually breast cancer. Now, when you have this kind of clinical feature, and if, you, if it is confirmed that it is inflammatory breast cancer, comparing to people who don't have inflammatory breast cancer, which is non-inflammatory breast cancer, the disease is more aggressive. So that by the time that you have a diagnosis of redness of this breast, the disease could have spread to the other place of the body, and even with all the treatment, there's a possibility that the treatment uh, may not be very effective. Okay. When you say this about, you know, not finding a lump and the redness for basically the last 20 years, what we've heard mm -hmm. people talk about is mammograms and self-exams mm -hmm. and uh, doing those monthly checks and looking for lumps. But now right. we're having to change the conversation mm -hmm. to add a, sort of a different caveat that not that those things are not appropriate, but they are not applicable. Is that what I'm understanding? That's correct. So therefore, a uh, woman could present with a red, well, the men could also have inflammatory breast cancer, but the breast is diffusely red, and sometimes it's painful, sometimes it's not painful. Mm -hmm. And it, true, I think most of the time it is probably infection, so you will end up getting antibiotics and then mm -hmm. see how it, uh, it goes. And, then, and you could see over a week to two weeks to see the response to these the antibodies that's prescribed. I think most of the time it is probably infection, so you will end up getting antibiotics and then mm -hmm. see how it, uh, it goes. And then and you could see over a week to two weeks to see the response to these the antibodies that's prescribed. But if it's not going away with the first round of antibiotics and it's still uh, getting bigger or it's not improving, you do have to suspect that this could be breast cancer. Now, in my mind, I've always kind of thought of cancer on the inside. It's mm -hmm. something that doesn't show. Mm -hmm. But this is just the very opposite. It's what I call it's an outside cancer. You've got redness on the breast. Mm -hmm. You could have an orange peeling look to mm -hmm. the skin. Right. The nipple could go brown or dent in, or right. the breast gets suddenly swollen. So these mm -hmm. are very outward physical presentations. That is correct. You could see it very clearly rather than feeling it. You could see it, actually. Well, you, you're going to feel it, but you could see it clearly. There's it, a big change in your breast. A sudden change in one breast. That's correct. I mean, sudden in a sense that some people really over a week and some people over three months, actually. Okay, so there's a little bit of a window. Right. But what would you recommend to a woman to do since now we're trying to add this new uh, layer of knowledge mm -hmm. to the breast cancer world for the general woman to know that this is a, a cancer that can affect a woman maybe younger than 40. Mm -hmm. It has an outward sign. Mm -hmm. And since a mammogram does not pick up, that there is no lump. Mm -hmm. And so what would be her first step to do if she wakes up one morning with a, a red hot swollen breast? What would be her first thing to do? Well, the first thing is to go to your primary care physician. Okay? I mean, I don't want you to think because red hot breast automatically is a breast cancer. Right, because there are other things you can get. You can get a, a nursing mother infection. You Correct. may have some kind of... And which is called mastitis, which is an infection of the breast, and it needs to be treated accordingly. So your f first visit to your any doctor, say they think it's infection, then I think it's worth getting the antibiotics. Now, mm -hmm. 
if, like I say, if you don't see an improvement, then definitely uh, you need to go to a uh, specialist, people who, like a surgeon who is involved in breast cancer or medical oncologist who knows about breast cancer, uh, then primary care physicians. Yeah. With mastitis, would you run a fever? A temperature, an elevated temperature? Sometimes yes, and sometimes no. No, but with inflammatory, you don't tend to run a temperature, right? Uh, no, you don't have a temperature. So that could be a little bit of a... Right. So the problem is that mastitis doesn't mean that you always have a fever also. Right. So so really, there's a need for good exam. Of course, this uh, skin changes underneath. They may feel a lump. Mm-hmm. If they feel a lump, you know, before even thinking about antibiotics, they may... Your primary care physician will refer you to uh, getting a biopsy of the, of the of the breast. So, it's 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 not that simple than uh, what we like to believe. But the question is how much you suspect it could be breast cancer. Mm-hmm. And see, for myself, and not having had any breast cancer in my family, and mm-hmm. having nursed five children, mm-hmm. when uh, cancer never was on my mind the day I woke up, mm-hmm. and my breast was red hot and swollen. Mm-hmm. That was just it never even clicked to my mind. Right. So we have a lot of education to do because I understand that my mentality mirrors a lot of the community. That right. Breast can- inflammatory is not so, on our so mind. So you have to remember that many women will not have a family history, not mm-hmm. just inflammatory breast cancer, but in non-inflammatory breast cancer. So a lot of people think that breast cancer could be a family, have a strong family history, but if you look at the entire population of breast cancer, uh, this a lot of women is actually first-time breast cancer. So... I would not, you know, for just in general in breast cancer, family history is not in Because you don't have a family history doesn't mean that you cannot get breast cancer. Now, what is the percentage of inflammatory based against the, the general population of breast cancers? About 2% in the United States. Probably. So can you break that down to what does that mean? Like oh, That's like 2 out of, if you have 100 breast cancer, it's about 2, two out of 100 is inflammatory breast cancer. And so they view it as a rare? That's Correct. I mean, because it's two out of one hundred. <laughs> right. But see, one of my pe- kind of pet peeves about when they mm-hmm. use the word rare mm-hmm. is rare doesn't mean never, and people tend to sometimes get this false security uh, about a rare disease. Mm-hmm. Well, that's rare. It's not going to happen to me. Right. But one of the things I could say from my experience, mm-hmm. and then uh, clearly from your experience mm-hmm. as a physician mm-hmm. treating people like me, is that because inflammatory is so aggressive. And in, in we haven't said that this yet, but we know it cannot be detected before stage three. Right. So there's not a lot of time to waste. Right. So back to walking our patient through mm-hmm. her imaginary scenario, waking mm-hmm. up one morning, her breast is red hot and swollen, uh, to go to a specialist, to go to a breast specialist first, or after she should she go to her family practice first? Well, so if you, in your mind, say that, really, I'm worried about breast cancer, mm-hmm. then you should go to a specialist. Mm-hmm. I mean... Because it's uh, you're suspecting yourself, and but if you're not quite sure, then you could go to primary care physician. But so it's a re- it's a level of what you believe actually, and okay. then uh, um, so <laughs> there's no clear cut answer. But it, it is true that um, it's only two out of one hundred. But if you look from people from the perspective among the patients, who, breast cancer patient who's dying in the United States, it's probably about 10 out of 100, 10% mm-hmm. is represented by inflammatory breast cancer. Mm-hmm. So if it's not inflammatory breast cancer, it's small. The likelihood is that you you could get a cure with appropriate treatment. Mm-hmm. In this case, if you don't make the right diagnosis and let it go, further you ha- you're putting yourself in a risk of uh, potentially uh, disease spreading and you could die from the breast cancer. So you do have to pay attention to Mm-hmm. Th- these changes, actually. And from what I understand, uh, breast cancer cells tend to double basically kind of like every 100 days. I don't know if that is very accurate, but IBC is every few. It's very, very rapid, so time is not on your side. Right. So hopefully, you know, since it is a more <clears throat> rare form of cancer, you'll have just a common nursing mother infection, mastitis type situation. Mm-hmm. But if there is inflammatory breast cancer, mm-hmm. time is not your friend. No, I mean, you need to get to the specialist. Mm-hmm. I mean, once you make a diagnosis of inflammatory breast cancer, it's very important to go to people 
who has seen this disease many times. Now, that is exactly why I'm sitting here talking uh-huh. to you today, because the Morgan Welch Clinic in Houston, Texas, uh-huh. was the first clinic devoted exclusively to the study right. of inflammatory breast cancer. Yes. It was opened in 2006. Mm-hmm. So now we have a patient who has suspicion of inflammatory, mm-hmm. has may or may not gotten satisfactory answers, mm-hmm. and they want to have a really conclusive because inflammatory is difficult to diagnose. Mm-hmm. Is that correct mm-hmm. to say? Why is it difficult to diagnose? Because sometimes um, the physician believe in strongly that this is not a breast cancer and they will not perform a biopsy. A biopsy. So a biopsy is extremely important to a proper diagnosis. Right. So sometimes you don't even feel a mass. You may have to do a biopsy of the breast to find out if there's cancer or not. Mm-hmm. So there's two type of biopsy. One is that you actually uh, stick the needle into the breast and taking the breast tissue itself. And sometimes, and the other is to do a skin biopsy, the surface of the breast, mm-hmm. to find out if there's any kind of uh, breast cancer cells. Okay, just like I said before, it's like an outside cancer, so that skin biopsy can do that, and those things are not, you know, too complicated, or, or you know, some maybe people view that as somewhat invasive, mm-hmm. but they're not particularly painful, and they're quick mm-hmm. and easy, and then you can have a, a strong conclusion. Right. So now that since MD Anderson has uh, the clinic, the Morgan Well Clinic, mm-hmm. how do you feel about patients coming here um, and being seen versus maybe trying to get care locally? Yeah, so we have no problem for you to get a local management. There's a standard treatment for how inflammatory, newly diagnosed inflammatory breast cancer should be cured, Mm -hmm. which is, one, you make the proper diagnosis. You want to make sure the disease has not spread to the other area. And both medical oncologists who provide a systemic treatment, surgery and radiation therapy all work together as a team. Mm -hmm. So... The guideline for how it should be treated is already out in the community, and most oncologists should know about this. So, okay. the, so the problem is that mo- there are sometimes community oncologists who don't follow the guideline. So that's mm-hmm. a big no-no. Okay. And the other second issue is that even if you follow everything what we're supposed to do, the still the outcome is not satisfactory. Mm-hmm. That means that maybe 50 to 60% of the women could die from a disease over five years with all the appropriate treatment mm-hmm. that we could offer with the current knowledge we have. So this means that, if possible, it's a, it's, it is better for these patients to seek a clinical trial, which mm-hmm. is a clinical trial in this case, is try to improve the, the standard care which is specifically related to inflammatory breast cancer, Mm -hmm. if that's available. Because clinical trials could be available for both inflammatory and non-inflammatory breast cancer, Mm -hmm. but it is better for these people to look for IBC-specific clinical trials if it is available. Now, that doesn't mean it's always MD Anderson, and there are other places that may have this. So the first thing is to find out if such a thing is available. So, mm-hmm. so so going back one more time, if you can't come to MD Anderson, you want to see the breast specialist. You want to make sure there's a team of people who's going to be working with you. And then do you have clinical trial or not? If you have a clinical trial, is it IBC specific? So you may not meet all the criteria, but, you know, mm-hmm. minimally the first two you, you need to go through. Well, and see, I can see from a patient point of view mm-hmm. how... St- 